Okay, I'm uh, Leo Baldo. Uh, like Tad uh, said, uh, you know, we came from Hawaii, and I have to thank him for inviting me. Although we came from the same place, and uh, I think it's a good opportunity for me to uh, at least see what's happening here at the uh, National Institute for Animal Agriculture, and hopefully uh, the things that we do in Hawaii can have some sort of an impact to uh, animal agriculture. So uh, the topic that basically uh, got me interested, uh, you know, I was looking for somebody who would do this type of presentation, but uh, they cannot make it, so I ended up doing it myself, and uh, through the uh, courtesy of Tad trying to convince me to come with him. So uh, uh, this is based on a research study at the University of Hawaii uh, done by our colleagues here, Dr. Surendra and Dr. Kanal, uh, who are with the Department of Molecular Biosciences and Bioengineering. Uh, and, uh, you know, for us, uh, with the Department of uh, Hawaii State Department of Agriculture, we're interested in pursuing uh, alternative sources of ingredients, especially uh, replacing fish meal. And I've Actually, uh, Tad got interested early in 2014 in, on black soldier fly. Uh, got introduced, visited the facility in uh, Ohio, and you know we had a conversation. It looks like it has a very good uh, application in Hawaii. You know, state being an island state, and you know you need to be sustainable in terms of your local ingredients. Um, and so, uh, you know, we would like to continue and hopefully we can get good results and maybe continue to fund this study. And we didn't know that the University of Hawaii was doing similar work. And so we have to partner with them. So as a courtesy, I'm going to be presenting some of the work that they have. Okay, uh, food waste. Uh, you know, uh, globally, uh, there's like 1.3 billion tons per year that are generated from food waste. And this is one third of the food supply that's intended for human consumption. And if you consider that amount, you know, this morning they're talking about uh, 800 million people that are not having food. This is more than enough to really feed them. And as you can see, it's approximately $750 billion economic loss a year. And in addition to that, you know, it creates a carbon footprint of 3.3 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gas emission, which uh, makes it the third largest emitter of greenhouse gas after the U.S. and China. So it's a humongous uh, opportunity if we can convert some of those ways into something with high-value products. But uh, talking about Hawaii, you know, our contribution to the food waste, you know, each person con weighs about uh, 162 kilos per year, or about 355 pounds. And a lot of those waste are coming from the consumer side, 64%, and then from the distribution center, about 30%, and about 4% from post harvest. Uh, in 2010, the amount that we wasted in Hawaii is around 237,000 tons, or 26% of our to uh, total food supply. And the cost is approximately more than a billion dollars per year. I'm trying to state this because 88% of our food supply is imported. So we're actually losing a lot of that. And if we can turn that into something with value, uh, it would be a very good thing for, you know, for the state to to uh, have this type of uh, initiative. So, and um, fo food wasted are basically fresh fruits, about 48%, rice, 41%, seafood, 40%, fresh vegetables, 36%. And a lot of this has a lot of uh, uh, food value. We have a way of converting it into something, you know, that provide us protein or fat, which we're probably gonna see later in this presentation. So uh, there are ways of managing all these uh, food ways. Uh, you know, as you are familiar, you know, you, you can just put it in a disposal, but this can create problem. A lot of water usage, uh, clogs piping, or you can actually directly feed it to your, you know, to your pig, but you need to boil it before you're doing that. 
And traditionally, you can do composting. But the product is of very low value. And they do uh, anaerobic digestion of food waste as well. But, uh, you know, there's limitation, high cost of capital, and the value of the product is not much. So what's new? Uh, converting food waste into high-value products using black soldier fly, simultaneously reducing it in, well, simultaneously reducing its impact on the environment. So this is basically uh, insect, insect farming and food waste. Uh, we consider it as an innovative method of food waste management because it's basically now an emerging field that can support our existing food and feed production systems. Uh, FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, organized uh, a conference, Insects to Feed the World. Uh, it started in 2014 in Netherlands, and then they did again in 2018 in China, and then there's one coming up in 2020 in Canada. So this is moving. It looks like there's a lot of interest in insects, insect farming to provide protein to feed the world. And why black soldier fly uh, out of those other flies? Uh, short life cycle in its native to tropical, subtropical, and warm temperate zones of North America. The adult has no mouth and don't eat. So it's a non-pest and a not a disease vector. And the larvae is voracious consumer of food waste. It consumes about 25 to 500 milligrams per larvae per day. And they can convert 50% of this uh, organic matter on a dry basis. The other good thing is not only food waste, they can colonize other organic waste as well. And it suppresses other pathogens and other pests. So it has so many good characteristics that can actually get permission in terms of regulatory approval. And, uh, you know, uh, later I would like to share that there's been, you know, if you're familiar with Enviroflight, they have produced some of these males already and it has undergone uh, FDA review and uh, uh, it's been approved for, or recommended for poultry as well as for aquaculture, particularly salmonids. So here's the life cycle. Uh, it's a very short life cycle, it takes about six weeks, 42 days. Uh, there are five stages. The first stage is uh, the eggs. They lay eggs, 500 to 900 eggs, and it has in four days. And next stage is the larval stage, and then they have the pre-pupal stage as well as the pupal stage, and then the adults. The two stages that are of particular interest are the larval stages, uh, larval and pre-pupal stages, because these are the uh, consumers of organic waste. Uh, just to uh, show you some uh, of the uh, published information by uh, Switzerland Research Company, uh, you have this larva, 5,000 larva and two fish. One on the left is fresh, and the other one on the right is cooked fish. And you can see how aggressive they are in terms of digesting, you know, those flesh. And to complete the digestion, it takes them about 24 hours. So, uh, because of all this information, uh, you know, University of Hawaii uh, did, uh, uh, was lucky to get some funding from uh, uh, the state as well as uh, uh, from uh, private sources to uh, uh, establish baseline on black soldier fly and determine their nutritional prof uh, profile. Uh, basically, uh, to characterize the uh, fatty acid and find out if it has some good value for application to aquaculture as well as for biodiesel production. And then also uh, analyze for proximate as well uh, amino acid uh, of those three products that can come out, which is basically uh, the uh, larvae or larva, prepupa, or you can actually feed them, you know, as the whole larva. Uh, and this is the schematic uh, of the food waste conversion that uh, was used in that study. 
uh, of course, uh, you know, the challenge is to come up with uh, black soldier eggs to start uh, a rearing facility. And your two products are basically compost or fertilizer and black soldier fly biomass, uh, you know, larva, pre pupa, or, and then it's going to be dried and to, uh, uh, under 60 degrees, uh, reduced the moisture content of uh, less than 10%, normally about 5 to 8%. And then uh, you can use that to uh, uh, extract oil, and the cake remaining can be convert, uh, analyzed for approximate uh, nutritional value. And the oil can be also uh, analyzed for its value in terms of uh, aquaculture application as well as uh, potential uh, the biodiesel substrate. So this is the uh, setup that was used by uh, the University of Hawaii. It's a uh, uh, protoculture. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, designed by protoculture. It's a company that actually started uh, uh, this uh, project uh, many years ago. And they were able to uh, make that collaboration with this company, and they provided this setup. So uh, it's a self-harvesting. So uh, uh, it has uh, over here, it has uh, an exit for the uh, pre-pupa to just discharge themselves uh, after consuming a lot of those waste. And it has a mechanism for providing moisture as well as air. So it's a micro-aeration process. You don't want any an aerobic digestion coming up there because it kills, you know, the activity of those larvae. And uh, just uh, one of the uh, key that uh, got them started is they have to have, uh, you know, a uh, black soldier fly from wild uh, population. And so they had this set up uh, to uh, produce the eggs that would then inoculate and feed on those organic waste or food waste. So it's uh, basically a mos kind of like a, a mosquito net, and they had all those food waste uh, inside with uh, some uh, bio balls for laying eggs. Uh, typically, uh, the uh, uh, black soldier fly uh, would like to doesn't lay their eggs on top of food or food waste. They want to find uh, small crevices to put their eggs on, but, you know, make sure that it's close to the food waste. So this is uh, what they have set up, and uh, just to show you what uh, materials they have. Uh, so these are the bio balls. You can probably see one fly moving there and trying to lay eggs. Yeah, right there. So uh, another key is adult uh, mating, uh, and there are factors that could affect uh, mating. Ambient relative humidity, they want it to be between 50 to 70 percent. Temperature, uh, they're saying 27 to 30 per, uh, degrees C, or like 80 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And then there has to be some light to provide that environment for better mating and uh, uh, laying eggs. So do you want that to be an enclosed uh, facility to prevent uh, predation from you know, termites and others? And the pupa can be introduced into the mating chamber and allowed to emerge uh, as adults. And then they're ready to mate in two days, basically. Uh, so you need a location for egg laying, and these are some of the things that they have used, uh, you know, uh, crevices, cardboard, corrugated cardboard, uh, or plastic flutes. Uh, the eggs can be collected or allowed to hatch uh, like this. Uh, you know, you can collect and incubate and then hatch it, so you can have a control. Or you can just put the eggs on top of the food waste, and then they hatch naturally. And this is uh, the BSF larvae growing on the food waste. Okay, uh, and uh, this is uh, what we can have harvested. 
and this is basically one of the mechanisms on how to collect, collect them and harvest them. So uh, after harvesting all those uh, pre-pupa, which was used in this study, you can do it with larva as well. Uh, but in this case, in this study, they had the pre-pupa because they have they found that it has more uh, uh, nutritional value. And uh, so this is uh, the products that they have produced, uh, press cake, meal, and an oil. And these were subjected to uh, analysis for nutritional value. Uh, so what we have here basically is, uh, you know, the three products, the pre-pupa, and then the press cake, and then the solvent extracted meal. As uh, so you, you know, uh, extract the oil, more you increase the protein and reduce the fat content, which is very ideal for, you know, aquaculture applications. So if you're going to look at the pre-pupa meal, compare that with soybean and fish meal, they're very, very comparable. And energy is also very good. So I would say that, uh, you know, this product has a very good uh, uh, nutritional value, and they are very similar to the uh, commercially available food sources for aquaculture and livestock application. And this is what uh, we have for the essential amino acids. Uh, the main uh, uh, amino acids that are limiting to pig, uh, poultry, uh, aquaculture are the lysine and methionine. Uh, as you can see uh, here, uh, if you're going to uh, extract the oil from the meal, you can actually increase the level of uh, the amino acid. For lysine, uh, you know, the yellow one is the pre-pupa. It's comparable to soybean and fish meal, as well as the methionine. So it has amino acid profile that's comparable to feed, feed sources. And so that means that we can actually have a good chance of replacing fish meal or even soybean meal in aquaculture diets. Uh, here's the fat, fatty acid profile uh, of the oil. Uh, the results was more uh, uh, into uh, biodiesel production as indicated by uh, the short chain or the high concentration of short chain uh, saturated fatty acid and a very low level of the uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, they're saying that this is a, has a potential uh, ideal for producing high quality biodiesel. Challenges that uh, they found was basically uh, to design an efficient mating chamber for continuous supply of eggs uh, and a process control for controlling the system, especially heat during the active digestion period. And then, of course, once you get this product, you have to deal with regulatory approval by the Food and Drug Administration for, uh, you know, if you want to use it in large commercial applications. So for us, as uh, the Hawaii State Department of Agriculture or the state of Hawaii would like to follow up on the result of this study, and the next step would be to look into the uh, technical and economic possibility, uh, feasibility of this uh, black surgical fly. Uh, from uh, my review of the work that they had, as well as the uh, available literatures, uh, I think it has a very good future in uh, in aquaculture as well as in livestock uh, in the sense that uh, you can grow the fly locally. For Hawaii being an island state, you can produce ingredients there and make your, you know, the production of uh, your protein ingredients sustainable. So uh, we would like to look, look at the rearing process, the product processing, and then test it on fish, shrimp, poultry, and hog. Uh, the other thing, too, that we would like to see is that uh, we can actually tailor the black soldier fly production to meet nutritional requirements of aquaculture and livestock, meaning that you can control the feed or food waste that you're going to feed black soldier fly to mimic the character, uh, nutritional profile of fish meal. So we're going to feed them with fish waste products selectively 
you can approximate the nutritional uh, profile for that. But, you know, that's just a hypothesis for now, but we would like to explore that. There has been work done already in replacing fish meal uh, in, salmo, uh, in salmonids or salmon. Basically, they replaced up to 100% with very similar biological performance. For rainbow trout, they went up to about 50% replacement on fish meal with no problem. For shrimp, they tried it as well, up to 25% replacement of fish meal. So there's a potential of replacing the finite fish meal, you know, that uh, the industry is using. And then, of course, uh, we would like to see if we can uh, explore the collaboration with uh, commercial black soldier flight companies like Envara Flight, Intera, Protex, and others, just to strengthen, you know, the uh, uh, analysis base that we have in order to have an efficient production of uh, uh, black soldier fly biomass. And uh, my last slide would be really to uh, use the black soldier uh, fly biomass or meal or oil to sustain the Hawaii feed meal. Uh, right now these are the uh, list of agriculture and seafood byproducts that we have available in Hawaii locally available in Hawaii that we can use to formulate our diet to feed, to make feed, to feed aquaculture, aquaculture our aquaculture species as well as our uh, pig and poultry. So the goal is uh, make BSF as a major local feed ingredient for Hawaii aquaculture and livestock industry. And uh, to make a formulation we need at least three major ingredients. So uh, especially, you know, formulation has to change with respect with whatever is available. But with black soldier fly, we can actually control that and make more uniform and sustainable depending on the requirements of the animals. So it will be the key ingredient if we were able to, you know, produce this. And we have like four uh, high value species in Hawaii. Uh, we have shrimp, we have the amberjack that we raise in the ocean in cages. We have uh, threadfin and we have prawn, freshwater prawn. There are other freshwater species like pangasius, tilapia, and catfish. These are lower value, but they can also feed on to uh, the black soldier fly meals. And right now, our current uh, feed demand is approximately 7,000 tons. If we can produce that, uh, that would be a big, you know, accomplishment for having this uh, research done at the University of Hawaii. And with that, I would like to have my acknowledgement to USDA who funded some of the work here, UH, and then some of these persons. And who knows, the next food source could be insect sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Bar flight. Right, and they just opened up the first commercial uh, facility, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah in uh, Kentucky, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was in part by some of the previous owners. But, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's what really was exciting. That's just moving past the science and getting commercial. Yeah, it's interesting because the, the lighting has to have a certain amount of aroma to breathe.
Um, you know, maggots are all normally associated with housefly. They don't really use that for black soldier fly. So maybe some consumer education has to take place. Yeah. Because they don't associate black soldier fly larvae as maggots. Housefly, that's that. So I, I think there has to be some, you know, education has to take place because, you know, there's a, this is a very unique insect, you know. It, you know, it doesn't have mouth parts, the adults, and then doesn't, you know, the pupa, and then emerges adult. They don't feed. They'll just meet, you know, whatever they had from their pre-pupal and larval stages continues until they die. So once they mate in two days, two days later, three days later, end of life. Forty. Uh, it it can go around forty percent, and the fat is around thirty thirty five. But you can bring that thing down depending on how much you want to extract. Uh, the protein can go up once you take out the fat. So you can go up to initially, you know, the larva that comes out about around forty forty three, and then the fat is around thirty five. But then when you extract more of the fat. The protein content is uh, go, goes higher. It can go up to about 63, which is at the level of fish meal, and the fat is around 3 percent. So now you're in the range where it's actually very comparable with the profile, uh, nutritional profile of fish meal and soybean meal. Yeah. So, so with y'all, it, to me, it makes more sense there with the cost of shipping. Yeah, so it is. That's basic. That, that's true. That, that's basically, you know, the reason why we don't have any more feed meal in Hawaii. The last feed meal was in early 90s, yeah. and since then we never had. Somebody is trying to bring it back, but until we have local ingredients available. You cannot sustain any commercial feedback.